Due to the reddish color of the rocks, the Elliott Formation is colloquially referred to as the Red Beds in older geologic literature. It was deposited in a fluvial lacustrine environment where rivers were more perennial and formed meandering channel geometries, as evidenced by the presence of lateral accretion. However, this depositional environment changed at the onset where evidence of shallower river channels, longer periods of floodplain stasis and flash flood events shows that the climate became more arid. Cydrops is a big temnus bundle that is more often found in Australia, the genus found in Lesotho has no species name yet. The skull of Australocles shows that an advanced hearing mechanism of turtles evolved before the appearance of modern turtles. Species of Clevisaurus were likely insectivorous. Biomechanical modeling suggests that they had high enough tooth pressures and strong enough bite force to crush chitin, indicating that they had the ability to feed on thick-shelled beetles as well as possibly small vertebrates. Diarthrognathus possesses a jaw structure that is similar to both mammals and more basal synapsids. Its primitive jaw joint is located between the quadrate and articular bones, and it's derived, Mammalian jaw joint is located between the squamosal and dentary bones. Much smaller than its predecessors, Pachygenelus was the closest sister to mammals. Living in the time of predatory dinosaurs, only the smallest cynodonts remained hidden from their view and so survived. The smaller body was more difficult to heat. Megazostrodon was a small, shrew-like animal between 10 to 12 centimeters long which probably ate insects and small reptiles. It is thought to have been nocturnal as it had a larger brain than earlier cynodonts and the enlarged areas of its brain were found to be those that process sounds and smells. The Tritilodon's habitat was limited to the forests of South Africa. When the species originated, about 200 million years ago, the African area was drier and hotter. But for most of their existence the climate was tropical and wetter. Postosuchus was an unusual quadrupedal reptile whose legs were columnar with the rear legs longer than the front legs. Its five toes were clawed and it is believed that they were good runners and good swimmers. Sphenosuchus is considered to have been carnivorous and cursorial. The found specimen consists of a nearly perfect but slightly crushed skull, a shoulder girdle, and a few limb bones so most of the known features come from the skull. Unlike modern crocodiles, Latargosuchus was a cursorial, terrestrial predator. 
It had unusually elongated limbs with its hind limbs slightly longer than its front. It was likely a solitary animal. Eocursor was a dinosaur that made a point to stay out of the way of predators, and the rear legs are a good indication of this. Eocursor would have been a bipedal dinosaur, and the lower leg bones are proportionately larger than the upper leg bones, a clear sign of legs that were suited for fast running. Lesithosaurus had rear legs that were very long in proportion to their body size, something that leads to the assumption that Lesithosaurus relied upon small size, speed, and agility to evade predators such as larger theropod dinosaurs of the Sauriscian line. The tusks of Heterodontosaurus have been the largest source of confusion for this genus since there are two very good theories that explain their presence. The first is that they were feeding aids that were used like digging tools, such as for the purpose of digging up plant roots and tubers or breaking down the walls of termite mounds. A Brictosaurus is usually considered the most basal member of the family Heterodontosauridae. It has been suggested that it lacked tusks and that this is another primitive feature. However, Caniniforms were clearly present on one of the two specimens of a Brictosaurus. Pegamastax seems to be one of the heterodontosaurid dinosaurs, and although some paleontologists have speculated that these kinds of dinosaurs use their teeth to eat small prey like lizards and insects. Originally thought to be a cynodont, Lycorhinus was not realized to be a dinosaur until 1962 when Alfred Walter Crompton studied the holotype. Fabrosaurus has been widely considered to be a dubious genus due to the very incomplete nature of the type remains, a partial jaw and three teeth. Eucnomosaurus is a basal sauropodomorph dinosaur genus usually considered to be a synonym of Euskalosaurus. Recent study by Yates in 2006, however, indicates that it is valid and the same animal as putative giant Herorosaurid alawalia. Platiosaurus was originally thought to be a species of Platiosaurus, however it was reassessed soon afterwards as a separate genus. As such, it was named in honor of the original genus, though it is unknown what its classification really is. Euskalosaurus is considered to have been a large, robust member of the sauropodomorph clade. Estimates from the existing fossil material measure this dinosaur at about 12 meters in length and 2 tons in weight. Since no complete skeletons of Kalamalumo have been discovered, much of what is known about its physical appearance and diet has to be inferred from its close relatives. Most likely it would be a herbivore that looked similar to dinosaurs such as Sarasaurus. Ardenix shows a transition toward the bulk browsing form of feeding characteristic of sauropods. Its jaws are narrow and V-shaped with a pointed symphysis. This is seen as an adaptation for a wider gape to facilitate in bulk browsing, and is observed in nearly all sauropods. Cephapanosaurus was an early, 
herbivorous sauropodomorph dinosaur occurring in the southern regions of. A distinctive feature of this dinosaur is the cross-shaped astragalus or talus bone in its ankle. Massospondylus may have used its short arms for defense against predators, in intraspecies combat, or in feeding, although its arms were too short to reach its mouth. Scientists speculate that it could have used its large pollex claw in combat, to strip plant material from trees, digging, or for grooming. Like other early sauropodomorphs, Ignivosaurus had a long, slender neck and tail. It generally resembled Massospondylus and Melanorosaurus, although the shape and position of the teeth, among other factors, led Knoll to conclude that the remains belonged to a previously unknown genus. It is hard to currently establish a size estimate for Archosaurus because at the time of writing the genus is only represented by the partial remains of two juveniles. It represents a transitional form of sauropodomorph that links the sauropodomorphs of the late Triassic and early mid-Jurassic. The relative transverse width of the femur of Merctinos is remarkably high for such a small animal. These proportions were known previously only from sauropoda and explained as an adaptation to a very high absolute weight. Antitonitris already shows adaptations for an increasing body size as seen in all later sauropods, the wrist bones were broader and thicker to support more weight, whereas the femur was elliptical in cross-section. As the two known Blacanosaurus specimens are extremely incomplete, very little is understood of this sauropodomorph taxon. The only information that has been deduced is from the bones of its hind limb anatomy, which are heavily built. This suggests that it was thickly set and robust. Pulinosaurus posture and skeletal build indicate that the animal was a low browser, unlike the prosauropods it shared its habitat with. Its flexible neck would have further allowed it to feed without moving its body very often and expending valuable energy, a trait that later sauropods would take to extreme lengths. Melanorosaurus represents a form that is intermediate between the bipedal sauropod ancestors and the later larger quadrupedal forms. Legimahati is thought to have been the largest land animal that had ever lived. At the age of 14 years, it is estimated to have reached a maximum size of around 12 tons in body mass, significantly larger than its relatives. It was more comparable to the later sauropod Diplodocus in body mass. The supposed weak joint in the jaw, led to the early hypothesis that dinosaurs such as these were scavengers, as the front teeth and bone structure of the jaw were thought to be too weak to take down and hold struggling prey. Some suggested that members of the species may have hunted in packs, preying upon prosauropods. Dracovenator was a medium-sized, moderately built, ground-dwelling, bipedal carnivore, that could grow up to an estimated 6 meters in length and 250 kilograms in body mass. Its type specimen was based on only a partial skull that was recovered. 